Hey guys, it's Chase, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at a Nintendo Switch that came in for a broken USB-C connector. So, this won't be just an ordinary swap the port and try it out and see if it works. Um, I want to make sure that the board works, and so I'm going to show you guys some testing points that I usually tend to look for on the Nintendo Switch when the charging port is broken. Um, because if you guys have replaced ports in the past on your own switches, sometimes the switch won't turn on after you replace the port, and I'm going to tell you why in this video. So let's go ahead into the microscope, and we'll take a look at the board. Okay, so I have the switch in a board holder, and I'm going to apply some flux around the port here. When I apply flux, Usually it allows the port to flow a little bit easier than it typically would. So that's why I like to use flux when I remove the port. Alright. Turn on the hot air station. The temperature is going to be 410 Celsius. And we're going to do 100 on the airspeed. And we're going to turn our fume extractor on. So this port should come up pretty quick here. We're just using a hot air nozzle as well. See the solder flowing on the front anchors there. See it's starting to flow on the rear anchors there which is really good. Alright. Beautiful. So when lifting up the port, I don't like to lift it up just straight up. I like to just let the port flow on the board so where it can just kind of move and then just go incredibly gentle up because you don't want to tear any of these pads. Yeah. I'm going to use some flux here. The reason for clearing these pads and putting fresh leaded solder on them is because they will flow much better when you make the brand new connection. You can wick them, sometimes I wick the pads, sometimes if I'm feeling good I'll just mix the leaded solder with the unleaded. There we go. That looks good for me. So we'll go ahead and clean this area up real quick. And you can see our joints, uh, or our pads here, look really, really good. All right. Also want to use Northridge Fix's uh, double-ended brush here as well, just to showcase that here in this video. All right, a little bit more alcohol here. Just go ahead and clean up the rest with a Q-tip here. The brush is really good for like getting around some of these uh, components, those bristles. All right. Next is we got to prep the new connector. So the best way to get this connector ready is to put some flux on these pins here, or the legs, or whatever you want to call them. The little connections that they're going to make on the board. And then grab your soldering iron. Now the soldering iron I'm using is a Pace ADS 200 and it's at 700 degrees Fahrenheit. 
The flux I'm using is an Amtec 559. All right. So these pins now have solder on them, right? And the board has leaded solder on the pads. That means when this port goes on the board, these pins are all going to bond very well. Let's go ahead and put this port on the board. Also, I don't want to forget what's good practice is to put flux on these anchors here. And we're going to add leaded solder to these as well. It's going to help them flow super easy when we reflow the port in. Usually these outside um, points are much easier to flow. Alright. Okay. Let's go ahead and flow this port right into place. So what we're looking for is these back anchors to melt. Apply the pressure, wait for it to cool, and boom. Okay, so this is the part of the video where I really wanted to get to, and it is concerning testing for short if you have a broken USB-C connector. So with our, it does not matter, red probe, black probe on ground, we're going to test for continuity on some of these caps. So this is our cap that I want to check first, and we do not have continuity to ground there that's going to be ground on that side of the capacitor so we're going to test all of the V's here okay alright alright so our M9 has no shorts that we can see that doesn't mean that this chip isn't bad it just means that we don't have any known shorts around this chip alright now let's check our BQ IC for any shorts. Let's see here. Our BQ IC does not have any shorts. The next one I want to check is P13 USB. Okay. We'll put our probe on ground here. That's our ground. That's our line that usually this capacitor right here is going to be shorted along with 
this capacitor right here. If this capacitor is shorted, usually this capacitor is also shorted on this side. Um, and in one occasion I actually had one of these filters shorted to ground. Uh, the, obviously the short was coming from the chip, but uh, the lines uh, were shorted. So let's check these. Okay, yeah, so no shorts. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in our switch and see what it does. Now I have the switch together enough to test. Um, I don't have my USB amp meter with me at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a known good battery in this switch and we'll, we'll check and see if it turns on. Hello. Alright, so we're going to take our known good battery and plug it in. Alright. We'll go ahead and hit the power button and see what it does. Awesome. Okay, Nintendo logo, that's good. Alright, cool. So it's booting. Awesome. Oh, touch doesn't work. <laughs> I don't have the touch hooked up. I always do that. And does a charge. And it's charging, which is good. Obviously we can't test how many amps it's drawing, but I am assuming it's going to work. So let's go ahead and plug it in this way. Just make sure it charges both ways. And it does, which is good. So I'll go ahead and finish putting this back together. Also, if you guys have a device that you'd like me to fix, my contact info is in the down below with the shop address. So I just wanted to say something real quick. Northridge Fix posted a video on, I think, Sunday, and the video was talking about just being encouraging to just keep moving forward. And I just want to kind of repeat that same thing. There are going to be days that are going to be hard. Uh, you know, you could be going through something hard in your life with family or friends. Um, or even with your job. Some days I only get maybe one customer, two customers a week. And in some cases I don't get customers at all in a week. Uh, but then there are some times where I'll get four or five customers in a single day. So don't stop persevering towards your goal. Think about myself when I started. I started with just a cheap Chinese soldering iron and hot air station. And now I have an amazing microscope, a camera that I can record this on, a paste soldering iron, a quick hot air station. So keep pushing yourself. You can do it. That's all I have for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Take care.